Do artificial sweeteners cause cancer? Oh no! Here are two new studies about this exact topic. Let's find out what the most recent evidence says. Here's what you need to know. Of course, you don't wanna eat anything that could possibly increase your risk of cancer. If you're a cancer survivor or have a family history of cancer, then you wanna be especially aware of this. But does this include avoiding artificial sweeteners? You know, I've said before that artificial sweeteners do not cause cancer, so was I wrong? In this video, I'm showing you exactly which artificial sweeteners have been linked to cancer and which are safe. This includes sucralose, esulfame, saccharin, steviol, and of course, aspartame. Let's first start with the most recent study. Then I'm gonna move on to the largest and most talked about study from the Nutrinet Santé group. You want to know about this. But first, in March of 2023, a paper was published looking to see if artificial sweeteners actually increase the risk of cancer. Now, I'm gonna use the term artificial sweeteners here because that's what most people are familiar with. But it's important to note that a lot of studies use the terms non-sugar sweeteners or non-nutritive sweeteners. It's because not all of these sweeteners are actually artificial. Some sweeteners come from natural or herbal items. For example, stevia is a zero calorie sweetener, but it's not artificial. Now, does this actually make it better or worse? Well, let's find out. Now, this study that was released in March is actually interesting because it summarizes all the available literature we have on artificial sweeteners and cancer risk. There are a lot of smaller studies that have been published on artificial sweeteners, but this study summarizes all the data we have together using statistical analysis. This is really smart. You can actually get an inside look into what the trend is in terms of artificial sweeteners. So is it actually safe or not? They summarized 68 studies. Keep in mind that people have been researching artificial sweeteners for a very long time, and they've also been around for a really long time. These researchers gathered up all that data and looked at the results. The studies included in this review are big studies. They're from large groups of people in the USA, in Europe, and in Australia. They include well-known studies like the Nurses' Health Survey, the EPIC study, or the Cancer Prevention Study. This study also included the Nutrinet Santé cohort, which we're gonna dive into a little bit further because there's a lot to know and a lot to unpack in that study. But after looking at all the data from all 68 studies, these researchers found that there was no link between artificial sweeteners and cancer risk. The authors of this study state that the most recent evidence provides general and consistent reassurance that non-sugar sweeteners do not have a carcinogenic risk. Okay, but that's just one study from one group of scientists. But this topic has been so highly debated. I've been working in cancer care for over 12 years, and even when I was in university completing my doctorate, this topic was being debated. But now let's look at the largest and most well-known study on artificial sweeteners and cancer risk, the Nutrinet Santé study. This is what people reference over and over again. You need to know about this one. This is the main event. If you're ever worried about cancer risk and artificial sweeteners, this is the study you need to know about. In 2022, the Nutrinet Santé study published new evidence. This is a massive study. This is what you need to look at when talking about artificial sweeteners and cancer risk. This study was completed over eight years, that's a really long time, and looked at over 100,000 French people. That's a really big group of people. They looked at consumption of artificial sweeteners and cancer risk. The question here is if you eat more artificial sweeteners, are you more likely to get cancer? Well, here's what they found out. First, you need to know that this is an epidemiological study. Epidemiological studies look at patterns of disease or illness across a population. It looks at large groups of people, like the 100,000 people in this study. That's a big group, which is amazing, but there's a downside. In an epidemiological study, you cannot determine causation. This study is not designed to answer the question, does X cause Y? Now, not to say that you should ignore this study, not at all. It's still gonna give us a really good indicator or warning if we start to see signs of an increase in cancer risk. But the downside is either way that this is not definitive proof. Okay, so knowing that, let's look at what the authors actually found. 
The authors concluded that artificial sweeteners, especially aspartame and asulfame K, are associated with an increased risk of cancer. What? But wait, this is not what it seems. And this conclusion has been highly disputed by many experts in the field. You do not want to be misled by this conclusion. That's exactly why you need to watch this video. So many experts disagree with how these researchers summarize their findings. Let me show you exactly why. When we look at this study in more details, there are a few red flags. First, sucralose or Splenda had absolutely no association with cancer at all, nothing. They found zero risk, but they didn't present that in their conclusion at all. Starting to get a sense that there might be some bias here. Secondly, when you look at the hazard ratio, these findings don't make any sense. A hazard ratio is a statistical way to actually measure risk. A hazard ratio of one means that there's no risk. It doesn't increase the risk of cancer or decrease the risk of cancer. There's literally no change. If the hazard ratio is above one, then that means it increases the risk of cancer. Now, this study divided the population into groups based on how much artificial sweetener they consumed. Non-consumers, low consumers, and high consumers. So if artificial sweeteners do increase the risk of cancer, then you would expect to see a higher risk among the people who are high consumers. But that's not what they found. When you look at the different groups, the low consumer groups actually had a higher hazard ratio than the higher consumer groups. This means if you eat a little bit of artificial sweetener, you actually have a higher risk than if you eat a lot of artificial sweetener. That just doesn't make practical sense. So that leads you to think that there are other factors at play here that are actually increasing the risk of cancer. There's other factors within their data that's actually causing the cancer risk to go up. Something else is going on with this population, it's not just artificial sweeteners. And the authors do cite other factors among their population that could be increasing the cancer risk. People who use more artificial sweeteners do tend to more likely be women, are a younger age, are more likely to be smokers, and are more likely to have diabetes. They also typically eat fewer vegetables, eat less fiber, and are more likely to drink sugary beverages. A lot of these factors are known to be associated with increasing your risk of cancer. Eating fewer vegetables, less fiber, drinking more sugary drinks. We have clear evidence that all of these increase your cancer risk. So is it these factors at play or is it the artificial sweeteners? Well, these researchers did use a statistical method to try to adjust for these other factors. So we can use statistics to help control for these other factors in an attempt to just look at artificial sweeteners and cancer. So when the authors of this study used this statistical method, the risk almost completely went away. Meaning that when you control for these other factors in an attempt to just look at the cancer risk caused by artificial sweeteners, the risk nearly decreased to nothing. What's particularly interesting is that the risk of breast cancer due to artificial sweeteners completely disappeared. There was absolutely no risk there. To me, that is pretty clear. It's not actually the artificial sweeteners that are causing cancer risk. Something else is at play here. More likely less vegetables, less fiber, and more sugary drinks, which we have seen to be a risk factor for cancer over and over again. You have to be cautious when looking at data like this. So many people will try to use a conclusion like this to spark fear among cancer survivors. You have to be careful when interpreting this type of data. This is the type of study that magazines or newspapers grab onto because they know scary headlines sell. But you still have to dig a little deeper and see what it truly says. Let me give you an example. There's a study that says eating anything at any time increases the risk of colon cancer among women. Eating anything at any time actually gives you colon cancer. The hazard ratio they found in that study was actually greater than the hazard ratio they found in the Nutrinet Santé study. So the next step in looking at cancer risk from artificial sweeteners would be to look at randomized controlled trials in humans. And there are some randomized controlled trials on artificial sweeteners. Of the ones we do have, we see that there's no indicator of harm among any of the health markers. 
We've researched things like insulin spikes due to artificial sweeteners, and there has been no association. Even when people are consuming extremely high levels of artificial sweeteners, insulin doesn't spike. It's still safe. If you're replacing sugar with artificial sweeteners, then overall, it's a positive thing. Artificial sweeteners have been shown to help people lose weight. We know if you have a higher or unhealthy body weight that this does increase your risk of cancer. So if you use artificial sweeteners to reduce your sugar consumption, then this is an overall net positive for you. I know this is tough information to take in. Clients that work with me in the Cancer Freedom Program struggle to accept that artificial sweeteners do not increase your cancer risk. Even after reading through the evidence and being shown the data that artificial sweeteners do not increase your cancer risk, they still struggle. Well, here's why. You've been told for years that artificial sweeteners increase your cancer risk. Years and years. You have to unlearn this false information. That takes time, that takes commitment. But keep in mind, just because someone says something on the internet doesn't make it true. It's easy for someone to say, artificial sweeteners, that sounds bad, they cause cancer. You know what's actually harder? Going through the actual evidence and critically evaluating the risk, like I did right here. This is harder, but it's worth going after the truth for your peace of mind. But really, some people will still say to you, artificial sweeteners are bad for you. They're dangerous. If you wanna get cancer, then eat more of this. Okay, and that's all fine to have those opinions and to not choose to eat those products yourself. But there is no scientific proof behind those statements. If you truly wanna reduce your cancer risk, then it would be best to eat whole foods only. Unprocessed, no sugar, clean, clean, clean. But hey, you also might wanna have a little joy in your life like enjoying an ice cream cone with your kids or a piece of chocolate at Easter, then it is okay to include these products in your life as well. You are not increasing your risk of cancer, plus you're living life. As a cancer survivor, isn't that what it's all about? Actually having joy in your life, that includes food too. So if you're sick of being scared of food and wanna shift to a place of power, here's what you need to do. Find the foods that actually help you fight off cancer. Instead of being scared of food, let's use it to lower your cancer risk. Let's look at food as power. Here's where to start. I've linked up this next video here. I'll see you in there.